the rival fiddlers. Before Brooklyn had spread itself beyond Greenwood Cemetery, a stone could be seen in Martin's lands, south of that burial ground, that bore a hoof mark. A Negro named Juiced, in the service of the Vander something or others, was plodding home on Saturday night, his fiddle under his arm. He had been playing for a wedding in Flatbush, and had been drinking schnapps until he saw stars on the ground and fences in the sky. In fact, the universe seemed so far out of order that he seated himself rather heavily on this rock to think about it. The behavior of the stars in swimming and rolling struck him as especially curious, and he conceived the notion that they wanted to dance. Putting his fiddle to his chin, he did become a wild jig, and though he did make it up as he went along, he was conscious of doing finely, when the boom of a bell did send a shiver down his spine, for it was twelve o'clock, and here he was playing a dancing tune on a Sunday. However, the sin of playing for a second on the Sabbath was as great as that as of playing all the day. So as long as he was in for it, he resolved to carry the tune to the end, and he fiddled away with a reckless vehemence. Presently he became aware that the music was both wilder and sweeter than before, and that there was more of it. Not until then did he observe that a tall, thin stranger stood beside him, and that he was a fiddle in two, composing a second to juiced Sare, as if he could read his thoughts before he put it into execution upon the strings. Juice paused, and the stranger did likewise. Where did Deborah did you come from? asked the first, and the other did smile. How did you come to know that music? Juice pursued. Oh, I've known that tune for years, was the reply. It's called the devil's joy at Sabbath breaking. You're a liar, cried the negro. The stranger bowed and burst into a mighty roar of laughter. A liar, repeated Juice, for I made up that music this very minute. Yet yeah, you noticed that I could follow when you played. <laughs> yeah, you can follow. I can lead, too. Do you know the tune, Go to the Devil and Shake Yourself? Yes, but I play second to nobody. Very well. I'll beat you at any air you try. Done, said Juice. And then it began a contest that lasted until daybreak. The stranger was a mighty expert. But you seemed to be overly inspired, and just as the sun appeared, he sounded in broad and solemn harmonies the hymn of the Von Cats. Now behold a dun of day, pious Dutchman sing and pray. At that the stranger exclaimed, Well, that beats the devil, and he did strike his foot angrily down upon the rock and disappeared in a flash of fire like a burst bomb. Juice was healed twenty feet by the explosion. He lay upon the ground insensible, and Della Herdsman found him a few hours later. As he had suffered no harm from the contest, and became a better fiddler than ever, it is supposed that the recording angel did not inscribe his feet of Sabbath-breaking against him in very large letters. There were a few who did doubt his story, but they had nothing more to say when he showed him the stamped hoof-mark upon that rock. 
However, there are fewer fiddlers among the Negroes than there used to be, and because they say that a violin is the devil's instrument.